All right. Scroll down to see the comments. Scroll down to see the see comments. The, see the blue arrows there? Yes, okay, and we are getting there. We are live. Hello and welcome to Grace Always Means to Friday live stream. Obviously, solo today, full on. Uh, Becky's not here, she's on holiday, enjoying herself. Sometimes we need our time to enjoy ourselves, isn't it? And the family. But Futini is here. Come on in. Say hi to everyone. I mean, everyone saw you probably, but uh, just in case. Hi, everyone. <laughs> hi. Uh, hi, mom. Uh, today we're going to talk about photography backup, um, which is, as Roy mentioned in the comments, a very dull topic. And I agree because it's something that not many people won't talk about, and it's something that you kind of have to do. It's like to go to the doctors or to the dentist every six months. But at the same time, it has to be there. So we're going to cover it once, and we will never come back to it. So when Becky comes back next week, we're going to have fun, you know, all the chat show that you normally used to. So, um, but before we begin, and hopefully that will um, give us enough time for everyone to get here who wants to see that, let's talk about giveaways. We're going to have a giveaway for you today. We're going to have two, one for the live audience today and one for the people who complained in the comments last week that they missed the stream and they definitely want to win. So we're going to do one for them as well. But we're going to have this night's nice baseball cap. This one is wet by me. So I didn't wash my hair for about 10 days. It's got some DNA, my DNA in it. So one of that, the lucky winner is going to get one of those. And the second one is going to get the one that was wet by Becky for two months as well. So um, all you have to do is put in the comments below that you would like to win. If you are watching this after the live show, we want you to say, I want to win, but also we want to know what equipment you use, because otherwise we don't want to have our comment section in, um, to be spammed with I won't win comments. You know, we want a little bit of, you know, a little bit of context there. So what you do, what you do for living, what's your bank account, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Okay, before we begin, thank you, Double Click and Ian Knox for Coffee Fund. We have a coffee fund. I think it's a whiskey fund, let's be honest. So, because I definitely need a whiskey. It's my first time, so please be gentle. Um, I am shaking. You just can't see it, but I am shaking inside, and I probably will cry in a pillow tonight. Uh, I can see your sweat just thanks. Just, just drips, you know, just drips. My legs are just under the table. They're just going all over the place as well. So... Uh, but let's see how it goes. Let's see for how long one man can entertain the live audience for an hour. So we may cut it short for about 15 minutes in, but who knows, you know. So let's do it. So we've covered this. We've covered the coffee fund. Yeah, coffee fund, you can use the dollar sign in Super Chat, so you can do it uh, this way. You can also send us a PayPal. Uh, where's PayPal, for Tini? In the description box. In the description box as well. So that's good. What else is here? No, I think it's good. Okay, so we've got a bunch of I would like to win comments, but also... We have hello from Yorkshire, hello from Australia. Who else is here? Montreal, Canada. That's nice. How would you from Texas? Exactly. Texas. We've got Belgium as well. Manchester. Oh, I want to go to Manchester. Now, I've been there about five years ago, but, you know, I want to visit again, go to the, the game or something. So, okay. Uh, hi, Confortini and Tilly. Yeah, Tilly is in daycare today. She's having fun with her mates. Um, by the way, did you see that uh, this Z9 photos? Yeah, so what do you think about them? I want to know. We're going to talk more about this in the podcast next week, but uh, do mention your thoughts so far. Best of luck, Con. Thank you very much, Richard. Speaking of Richard, thank you very much for all your help with preparation for this um, live stream. Richard Brown is the man who can help you with photography backup. So normally I would give you an option what you can do yourself, but one of the things, if you do find it too difficult, Go speak to Richard Brown. He's the man to talk to. He can help you to set those things up. Probably much better than me. Okay, who else we have? Pennsylvania, USA, Dubai, Cambridgeshire. I like how we jump from, you know, Dubai to uh, Cambridgeshire. Uh, ta -da -da, good luck, Corn. Thank you very much. Backup may not be sexy, but it is essential. I do agree with you, Richard. Hi from Israel. Fantastic. Is everyone here? Let's begin. Okay, so what is photography backup? Is effectively a second copy of your image. So imagine you have all your photography on your computer or your hard drive and something happens to it. Um, hard drives do tend to fail. It just happens to them. And unfortunately, really there is no um, 
there's really kind of a, a no idea where, like, which hard drive is going to fail, which brand is better or not. Because if you look online, the main brands are like Hitachi, Seagate, and Western Digital. They all fail at some point. And unfortunately, um, well, there is, there's nothing you can do about it. So they may last you for 10 years. They may fail the next month. So you definitely want to have a second copy because one copy of your Genesis is better than nothing. It's as simple as that because your laptop can get stolen or just break. You can you know, hammer a nail through it accidentally. You never know. But it's worth doing. And a lot of people, what I see, what they do is they buy an external hard drive, they plug it in to their laptop, and they copy images manually. So they basically, they will just copy the images from the internal hard drive to the external hard drive. So that's the most basic thing you can do. So you buy an external hard drive. So generally, hard drives, we have two types. We have HDD, so um, just a kind of uh, regular hard drive. Those are big. They allow for large capacity. So I think the largest hard drive at the moment is about 18 or 20 terabytes, which means it can store a lot of images and also a lot of hours of video as well. You also can buy SSD drives. Those are solid state drives. They're much smaller. The beauty of them that there are no moving parts inside, so they're a little bit more prone to uh, well, being thrown around. I wouldn't recommend that, but um, that's the idea. With the external proper hard drives, because there are a lot of moving parts, if you drop it, it's highly likely it will fail at some point. So you want to buy an external hard drive, either USB 3 or USB C, depending on the connection you have, plug it in, and just copy all your photography folder into that hard drive. Ideally, you then later on want to store this hard drive not in your house, but somewhere else. The reason why you don't want to store it in your house is because obviously if something happens, like fire or something like this, then obviously both hard drives will be destroyed. So you do want to keep it somewhere else. So I keep my hard drive at Grace Westminster under Grace Pillow. That's just what I do. Okay, so let's see what we have so far. I would like to win, I would like to win. NAS is the way to go. We'll get to the NAS at some point. Um, Okay, Synology, NAS, et cetera, et cetera, black lace. Okay, so you bought a hard drive, you plugged it into your computer, you copied it. Obviously, this is the basic thing you can do. You have a second copy of your file. You can, you know, rest freely. Now, you can also automate it. There are bits of software that will allow you, instead of you doing your manual backup, uh, to do it automatically. The reason why manual backup is not as good is because it requires photographers' involvement. So you, you need to know what you copy and what you didn't. It generally works really well when you copied all your photography folder and then you went on a shoot, you transferred your images from your camera to your computer, and then you transferred that folder to external hard drive. That's really good. But imagine that you worked on some of your old images that's already been copied to your hard drive, uh, then you effectively would need to recopy it again. And that requires just you remembering those things. And in my opinion, that's if you can automate those things, so take those things out of your own way, so that means you don't need to remember everything, then you can just set it up automatically. So for um, Windows users, I would recommend a software called Weam, and uh, for Mac users, you can use Time Machine, which I do find a little bit complicated. Uh, Carbon, uh, a Carbon Copy Clone is the one I would recommend for this type of setup. So this is what we call direct attach storage. So you effectively directly attach your external hard drive to your computer and you copy everything manually. You have two more options. So you have your um, network attached storage. So or a lot of people mention NAS and you have two companies that are quite famous for this. You've got QNAP and you've got Synology. Uh, those produce, um, effectively think about NAS as a little server that doesn't need to be connected to your computer directly. You, you can connect it to, uh, to, you, to your router and then connect to your computer. You buy this box, it normally uh, gives you an option of let's say two, four, or six base where you can put let's say two, four, or six hard drives in. And what this allows for? Well, first of all, it allows you what they call redundancy. So you can effectively use four hard drives and spread all your images over four hard drives. That's called RAID system. Effectively, that allows you for drive failure. So if one drive fails in that setup, you can effectively replace it with a new one, and the network, so, uh, the, uh, the NAS itself will rebuild 
the database, so all your images will stay the same. Some of the RAID setups will allow you for two or three drives failure at the same time. So think about this, it's quite useful because yes, imagine you have two drives only, one is your main one, one is the other one, and they both failed, then you don't have another copy. Again, having three copies instead of two is better than having two copies, as simple as that. Okay, let's look at the comments here. Yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe because um, if you're not bored yet, <laughs> <laughs> then uh, definitely uh, do put us like. So how many likes do we have, Tini? Can you tell me? Because I have no idea how to use the thing. We have 128 uh, viewers. Oh, wow. And we have 32 likes. <gasps> okay, I thought it was going to be five people watching us. <laughs> 128, okay. Well, if you can put a like, that would be awesome. Um, I hope I'm not gonna ruin it by the end of it, but uh, let's see what people say. Constantly let himself go again. Come on, guys. Just just be the, pinned one. the pinned one, okay. One copy is not enough, and I absolutely agree with it. And that's why, ideally, you want to get a NAS, network attached storage, and in my opinion, you also have to look at the cloud storage. So. Let's talk about cloud storage. So cloud storage is effectively you uploading your images somewhere and they're stored off site. Why this is good? Because obviously they're not, you know, they're not in your, in your house. So if something happens, you always have a backup. So that's quite useful. Um, it's also worth keeping it as, um, as a third option, in my opinion. So you have your main computer, you have your copy off site of, the, of your hard drive, which let's say is somewhere at your work or at the office or something like this. And the third option is the cloud storage. So the reason why I say it's a third option because uh, there are quite a few limitations of using cloud storage. Imagine your database is quite large. My database is about, is about 12 terabytes at the moment of imagery and about 12, about 12 terabytes of video. To upload it, in UK is gonna take you quite a bit of time. I, I know that some people have fiber and I'm sure that the connections in some countries are much faster than UK. But in UK, generally, if you get 30, 40 megabits uh, broadband, that's, that's kind of a normal. Yes, you can get um, 100, 200 megabits as well in some areas, but it's not um, spread everywhere. So upload speeds are fairly slow, which means for me to upload 20 terabytes of data, it would probably take me about a couple of months, and that's actually what happened to me. So computer would be running 24 seven, and the software would be uploading the images slowly, slowly to the service. So this is one of the important things. I know a lot of users tend to switch on their computers in the morning and then switch them off in the evening. So in this case, you probably, if you do that, then it's probably gonna take you even more than two, three months to upload that amount of data. Obviously, if you don't have a lot of data, that's gonna be faster. But yes, for some professional photographers, especially wedding photographers, I'm sure that your database is huge. So that's limitation number one. The limita limitation number two is that if something happens and you need to download your data back, again, you're not gonna get a download at full speed. Uh, you, you, it's, it's going to take ages for them to compile the, the, the download and also then for you to download. So it's not going to be, again, if you've got a fast connection, it's not going to be as fast as you think. There are limitations on the server there. And also some companies um, will allow you to order a hard drive for them that they will ship to you, but at additional cost. So again, you're looking at uh, something maybe two, three hundred dollars, and then you may need to uh, get, you know, wait for a couple of weeks, which means if you have to wait and you need those images now, it's not the best solution. So that's the reason why you want to have your cloud storage, and I would recommend you Backblaze personally because I think that's, that's the one that's most popular one. Let me just see if I can share the screen. Do we have it there? Okay, let's see. I'm really good at this. <laughs> okay, here we are. You got Backblaze. Um, that seems to be the most popular bit of software. If you have any other recommendations, do put them in the comments below. I think it costs about $60 a year. I think that's gonna go up to 70 um, next month. So if you do wanna join, I guess it's maybe worth considering. Um, and uh, yeah, it just, uh, you download a bit of software, it runs in the background uh, or in initial setup stage. You basically would need to um, set up, uh, basically tell it the folders that you want um, for the software to upload online and then it will do it for you. So generally it will be your photography folder or maybe your documents, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, but my advice is really uh, get external hard drive because you want to have your copy available to you whenever you need. Um, 
let's see what people say. Where are the comments? This is a disaster. <laughs> Here we go. Let's see. Nice backup. It's too slow for working off. No, um, Roy, I wouldn't recommend to you to work off um, a NAS setup. NAS is effectively, yeah, it's a mini server. So um, I would still recommend to you to use your main hard drive for your photography and then have a bit of software set up to upload to NAS. So I have VM set up and it's uploaded twice a week, normally at nine at night. Um, so I think it's Monday, Thursday evening. And effectively, all it does is set up the way that it's the software checks um, all the changes in my uh, photography folder and uploads all the new bits as well. So as simple as that, uh, NAS software, it's, you know, a lot of people buy them for family because you can also, you know, for family use because effectively you can have your image library there and then all your members of family can connect to it and show those images. Or let's say if you work in a uh, group, let's say like us editing a video, let's say, and Fotini wants to have a look at those bits of video and then I want to edit them and then, you know, she can see what I'm doing there. Then this type of um, use is quite useful. But my advice for photography storage, I personally have the NAS just for my photography backup. I don't use it for anything else. So because I don't want to slow down on my, um, my Synology. So, um, but yeah, if you want to use it, you can stream music and video from there. And effectively, you can connect your NAS storage from your mobile phone or iPads or laptops anywhere in the world. So effectively, if you set it up to be connected to the internet, it's effectively a, service, a server that you can connect to um, anytime. Speaking of setting up, um, something like Synology NAS or QNAP, uh, they are really good when they work. So generally you download a bit of software, you plug it in and everything is done automatically. But as connecting Nitkin camera to Snapbridge to your phone, when it works is beautiful. When it doesn't, that's where all the problems start. So, and depending on your um, level, um, you know, literacy level with computers, if you know how to deal with TCP IP addresses and DNSS and th all things like this, you probably should be fine. But if you're not, that's where it becomes an issue. And a lot of people buy those um, NAS um, equipments and they just connect it via USB drive. You can do that, it will work, but I think it's just, uh, it kind of defeats the purpose. Then you can just get an external hard drive. Somebody asked you why we have an informant on, <laughs> on uh, TV. Oh yes, Mr. Clunes, Martin Clunes, um, it just draws too much attention of my face. <laughs> so our, our camera tend to refocus on him. So we have to block him off, call it censorship, but um, we, we had to deal with what we can. Normally I sit there and Becky sits here and it's absolutely fine, but when I'm alone, I have to get all attention on me. It's all about me. <laughs> all eyes on you. Exactly, all eyes on me. Uh, let's see, uh, someone using two, uh, two NAS drives. Okay, so do you mean you've got two bits of NAS equipment, Roy, or do you mean you have two bay um, NAS? So I have um, four bay Synology, and generally um, I think four, four bay is a good way to start. Um, Richard Brown also recommended me this. Uh, the reason why you want to have uh, two bay NAS over, let's say, um, four bay NAS over two bay NAS is because if actually two bay NAS, it's only in RAID, if, um, um, in RAID system where one mirrors another one. So one drive fails, it's highly likely that you'll lose all images on there. When you go four bay, you can effectively set it as a RAID type five or six where you can have two drives or three drives fail and you still should be fine. Well, in four, in four RAID stuff, I think it's, uh, it's maximum up to two, so which is quite good. And the beauty of that is if you have four bay, um, you know, NAS where you have four drives, you can update your drives later on. So I had, um, I think, four eight terabyte drives and uh, when the prices were down on, on hard drives, it's not anymore, but at some point, 14 terabyte drives were going for about 200 pounds or so a pop. I slowly upgraded all my drives in there to 14 terabytes. And what I did, I would buy that drive, I would take one out, I would put one in, and the Synology would rebuild the database without me losing all the data. So that's, that's a really good way of doing it. So effectively, you buy one bit of hardware, uh, hardware and then you can just update the drives in between. Okay, let's see. Two megabytes. Uh, someone recommended to use um, uh, Amazon uh, Cloud Storage that comes normally with a part of Amazon Prime. This is great if you just have photography because all your raw, full of, uh, raw files as well as JPEGs and TIFFs 
uh, you can have unlimited storage. However, if you shoot video as well as images, then um, Amazon Drive won't allow for that. So it's not unlimited sto storage for videos. So you may need to pay extra for this. But if it's just for photography, it's quite useful. I personally use Amazon Drive when I to supply the already edited images uh, to the clients. So if I actually upload the folder, and I'll send the link to them. And they can see there forever because, as I say, as long as you are Amazon Prime member, there is no extra charge there. Pinned comment, okay. BT Fiber Broadband often included two terabytes of BT cloud storage. Two terabytes uh, cloud storage may not be enough for a lot of people. So that's the thing. But generally, if your photography storage is fairly small, then you can start with this. Eventually, you may need to upgrade. So yeah, we'll be talking about BT cloud storage. We got Google Drive, Dropbox, places like this. Generally, um, um, Apple has um, um, as well cloud storage. They're good up to a certain amount where, yeah, you, you can pay, um, I think, something like 79p for one terabyte or something like this. It's generally not enough for people who shoot a lot. And if, let's say, your professional photographer, again, is not good enough, you may need to pay a lot more. So something like Backblaze makes sense because it's unlimited, effectively, um, um, upload of your, you know, of your storage. Yes, it's slow, but at the same time, if you ever need to recover, uh, it's a good option to have. Um, Amazon Glacier, it's very similar to Backblaze. It's, um, I think, the only problem there, the different types of, um, uh, different types of you can subscribe to because one of it you can upload as much as you want But to actually when you need to recover it You may need to wait for quite a long time and then you got the faster service that you need to pay for so you can look into the options like this Again, uh, the reason why I think backblaze is recommended is because it's quite a foolproof So you just download a bit of software you specify the folders you want to upload and the software does the job So with something like Amazon Glacier, uh, you may need to Spend a little bit more time tinkering with it. And again, we have people uh, w you know, who are really good with computers, some of them not. So some people enjoy taking photographs as it is by pressing a button and just taking a shot and thinking about photography. Some people like to tinker with all the uh, settings of the camera, all the settings on the computer, Lightroom, et cetera, et cetera. So we want to keep it basically for people with all levels. Um, Okay, the problem, Samantha says, the problem with updating drives within RAID system is the manufacturers will eventually stop making the replacements, so new system will be needed. Correct. Uh, this is not a solution for life. Any backup solution is not a solution for life. Think about CD-ROMs and DVD-ROMs. Well, let's start with CD-ROMs. 700 megabytes per disk. What's 700 megabytes right now? Yes, when we had dial-up connection, an MP3 track would be through. Nowadays... We obviously can download 100 megabytes per second, et cetera, et cetera. So with those things, you're good probably for about five years, maybe tops 10. But eventually, it's kind of an ongoing game where you need to update your hardware every now and then. So at the moment, hard drives, just regular external hard drives, which are normally 3.5 inches, so the big things, they're generally good nowadays because you got something like 8 and 20 terabyte hard drives. That's a lot of storage for a lot of people. So you can buy one hard drive that will last you probably for 10 years. For professional photographers, especially people shooting weddings or sports or wildlife, where you end up with thousands of images in a day, or for videographers who shoot 4K, um, I can tell you that our podcast last week was 30 um, gigabytes. So I got 4K footage, about 25 gig, and then uh, uncompressed audio, another five gigabytes. That's a lot of data just for one podcast. You're not going to delete it. You're going to keep it at some point because I'm a hoarder, and hopefully in 10 years I'll release a, um, you know, a DVD or something. Um, the best of the what's it, what's it called? The best hits, volume one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but you're right, Samantha. It's it's ongoing thing. So yes, every five, 10 years you may need to check. And yes, SSD drives. Uh, which are much faster nowadays. Um, they're still expensive, but who knows, maybe in five, 10 years, we will get 10 terabyte SSD drive, which will cost something like 200 pounds. And then we all switch to SSDs, and that will make things smaller as well. Um, Alien says, upgraded from two bay to four bay NAS in the process of trying to set up a backup to family member's house and creating my own cloud. I'm a little confused on the setup, but that's the plan. And that's the problem with NAS storage. It requires a little bit of research. I can tell you my personal story. I was thinking of buying a NAS, um, Synology NAS in my case, for about two years. And the more I read about it, it was fine. Yeah, I see the benefits of it. It's basically having your own cloud. You can, uh, you can stream movies and videos from it. 
uh, let's say I can be here and my NAS can be in my house at home and I can, let's say, check my photographs from there. That's quite useful. And obviously you can stream uh, movies on the big screen, et cetera, et cetera. But a lot of people hosting their websites on them. You know, you, they can have your little cloud, your little Google Drive effectively on your computer. This is really nice. But the moment you start to think about network connection and TCP IP and how to set it up properly, that's where it would become quite overwhelming for me. And it took me about two years to kind of brace myself and do that. The good news about NAS nowadays is that the software is fairly plug and play. So um, for a lot of people, um, let's say not advanced people like me, I'm, I'm not really like, you know, I don't know coding or things like this. I don't know network um, as, as such. I can build a computer and install Windows on it, but something to do with networking is a little bit just way over my head. But even for me, it was absolutely fine. It was absolutely fine. But yeah, you, I would recommend you to set it up as a photography backup. It's reasonably straightforward. If you want to use other features, that's where you will need to spend a little bit more time just learning things because the really the kind of the, the feature list is huge on those things. Okay, what, who else we have there? So we have, ta -ta -ta, let me scroll through YouTube. Storage is useless without good filing system. This is right. We that's that's its all thing to be honest with you, Roy. So <laughs> maybe one day when Becky's away again, we're gonna talk about that. Um, or how to build a computer. That was another thing I, I wanted to talk at some point. Uh, who did we meet? Thank you, Michael, um, for a nice 10 pounds. <laughs> you know, like I'm glad that some people are actually still watching this. So that's, uh, you know, I think I've loaded the bar as much as I could. But, uh, you know, uh, let's see. Storage is loose without good filing system. We covered this. Also worth remembering that recovering the raw files is only part of the story. You need XMP files. That's correct. XMP files are um, created by Lightroom. It effectively stores all your data, what, what editing you've done to the images um, in that file effectively. So if you don't copy your XMP file, then effectively once you recover the, that photograph and open it in Lightroom, it's just going to be as it was taken with your camera. Speaking of backup, a lot of people ask two things. Do I need to use synchronization? So imagine you, let's say you updated your old file. Do you want this updated file now to replace the old file in your backup? So that's option one. And um, also versioning and, oh, and encryption. So let's start with versioning. Ideally, I would recommend not to use sync uh, because sync will update your old files as well. So imagine you had, um, let's say, you put the images in and the new images will be copied automatically. That's absolutely fine. But imagine you accidentally deleted your folder on your main library hard drive. And then once this bit of software connects, it will delete that folder also on your backup. So that's the reason why you don't want to have full synchronization. So when you set up your bit of software like Carbon Clone co uh, Copy or VM, you want to make sure that there's no sync. It will actually um, upload everything new and modify it and won't delete your old files. So think about this way as an example. So imagine, Roy mentioned file structure. Imagine you, uh, um, you had your own structure, let's say by day and month and things like this, and you decide to change it to just days, let's say, you know, just dates. So you would remove all your month folders and you would just put them in a list like this in a year. Uh, what would happen is uh, with sync, it would remove all the month folders and it would just do exactly what you've done on your main library which is good unless you delete something, yes? So with non-sync version, it will keep all your month folders and all the images there. And it will also make all the copies of those folders that you moved now and put them separately. So effectively you end up with the two bits of folder. So your backup suddenly is gonna become huge. Or let's say you change the file name. So you change it from, let's say, uh, the date, let's say, um, what day is it today? So 30th of July, 2021 to 30th of July, 2021 dash, um, nice chat with Constantine. You know, suddenly with no sync, you'll have two folders, the old one and the new one, but with sync, it will change it. I wouldn't recommend sync just in case if you delete things in the future. So that's number one, encryption. Now we all been a little bit paranoid about our privacy, we all like to wear tinfoil hats, et cetera, et cetera. That's all good, that's all good. So you, you, you decide, I'm gonna encrypt the thing, you know, all my backup with a 256 key setup, et cetera, et cetera. That's all nice and dandy, but imagine that in five, 10 years down the road, 
you've updated your Windows or Mac software, and Mac is notorious to you know, releasing new um, operating systems every year and then stop supporting older ones within two year period. And that's why, let's say, something like Apple Aperture, we can't use anymore. So imagine you have your, all your encryptions, yeah? You install the Windows, the, the software that you use for your backup and encryption is no longer available or no longer works on your new operating system. And that's where the problem comes. So my advice, okay, unless it's very sensitive, do not use encryption. So um, it's as simple as that. So if it's, yes, if it's, if it's, let's say, a high security thing, maybe you have um, photographs of uh, and specifications of Z9, then yeah, you definitely, you want to encrypt them, you know, in case you get hacked. But uh, for junior photography or family stuff, it's, it's not a big issue. So do keep the encryption off. Okay, what else do we have here? Let's have a look. Good afternoon, good afternoon to you. Uh, to flash storage. Um, let me see. So, uh, double click mentions what about backing up your NAS? So, we've done all our backup, yeah? So, we've ba we have our setup, we have an, our NAS connection, which automatically backs up all our photography from our main storage to the NAS. So, your NAS is still in your premises, in your house. So I have my NAS set up um, next to the road to downstairs. My main computer is an office upstairs. What happens if, if uh, let's say, fire happens, you know? So obviously you lose both, uh, bo um, well, all images again. So you definitely either want to have your NAS either offsite, or what you want to do, what I do once every month or every two months, depending on how lazy I am, I would have an external hard drive that I would connect to my NAS. And that would back up all the information on that NAS to that hard drive. And that thing goes to graze and sits here. So, and the reason for that being is if I ever, if something happens, let's say, yeah, flood, fire, et cetera, et cetera, and all my electronics just go wet, et cetera, and no longer work, I still have a backup. So that's the reason. So just to explain you what I do personally, yeah, my main computer is Windows, yeah, and um, I do my location shoots on MacBook. So both of them, Backup. I have a software set up automatically to backup to my Synology NAS, which is still in my house. That's absolutely fine. Um, I also um, have my main library being backed up to Blackbase. Uh, Blackbase. Backblaze. That's the word. Um, so that goes to the cloud as well. And on top of this, I have external hard drive, very large one that I connect one every month, and I just copy whatever is on my NAS hard drive there, and it just goes back to grades. So this is a really good setup. So in this case, you have effectively four points of failure. If my computer packs up, I still have a copy. If fire or flood happens, I still have a copy of site, and I have a copy that I can access straight away, which is a physical copy of grades, and I still have my online backup, which is with Backblaze. So that is pretty good in my opinion. What do you think? I uh, completely agree. I think yeah. Yeah, do you do your photography backup for Tini? Oh, yes. Oh, well, every other day. Every other day. Well, for Tini, it does every other day. So, and she will tell you now exactly what she does. <laughs> no, please don't. All right. Uh, do we have any pinned comments? We have one. I'm not sure. Do you have your backup? Uh, Blackbase would not backup personal network drives. You need a business account. This I'm not 100% sure, Eileen. Um, so, Eileen asked if uh, Blackbase um, does backup NAS. I'm not 100% sure I haven't tried it. My main computer, uh, which is Windows PC, backs up directly there. So generally my computer is 24-7 on, so I don't switch on and switch off my computer. It's generally run, uh, running things on it. So yeah, it's just automatically backs up. But as I say, it's the initial backup to Backblaze, which takes ages normally. Because if actually imagine all this data have to go to the cloud. And normally our download speeds, at least in UK, are reasonably fast, but our upload speeds are fairly low. So uh, I can tell you 100 megabit connection with Virgin, 4K video, which is 10 terabyte, let's say, of our podcast, takes about three hours to upload to YouTube. And that's just to, to do with connection, not YouTube itself. Okay, so yeah, Time Machine backs up every hour, very useful. Exactly, Nick, so this is really good. I always get confused with Time Machine because Time Machine allows for versioning and I always, it always becomes a little bit too complicated for me, so I prefer Carbon 
uh, carbon clone copy myself, but Time Machine, you know, if you know how to work it, and it's generates Apple software, so it should be very, you know, very easy. So you can just switch it on, it does the thing for you as well. So I had at some point, three, about two, three years ago, Time Machine backing up to my Synology NAS. So I've changed it now, but it, it does work as well. Again, you just need to set it up. Uh, unrepeatable power supply is necessity for NAS. Absolutely agree, um, David Liu. Um, so all your equipment, ideally, should be surgically protected. It's as simple as it gets. So you want to make sure that your computer is surgically protected and your NAS hardware is um, surgically protected. Keep in mind as well, let's say, when we leave the house, let's say, if you go on holiday for three weeks, we generally would want to switch everything off, right? So, because obviously we don't want to have any power failure or anything like this. So, at that time you're not at home, would you want to keep all your photography in the house? You know, generally 99.9% of the time it should be absolutely fine. But offsite, you know, um, location, let's say storage somewhere is quite useful. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta, you should work in the industry insurance. <laughs> I'm a really bad salesman though, you know. Unless there's a good commission, <laughs> let me know. Give, give, give me the incentive. Exactly, you know, as long as I see money, yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, Matt says, please bear in mind that only permanent backup medium is optical DVD. You can take it to this level, exactly. So you can do it, you know, get it as complicated as you want. But I think, yeah, the basic thing, what I normally, because it's, I, I do a lot of teaching, and what I normally do with um, people I teach, they would normally have, the, the best backup they would ever have is they would buy one of those uh, Western Digital external hard drive, which is not even powered hard drive, it's one of those 2.5 inch one, and they would plug it into their MacBook, and the Western Digital software would back it up. Again, I, I personally find those, uh, um, you know, Western Digital and Seagate solutions, backup solutions, I, I call them bloatware personally, but that's what a lot of people do. So if you can do a little bit better than this, it's already a big step, that's the thing. But if you want to go optical, and um, we, um, we had the chap Mark who did, who did video for us back three, five years ago. Uh, he backed everything up to optical, but it's, it becomes quite expensive and overly complicated. Okay, um, Ian says, my Synology backup is near real time, just runs 24 seven if there is something to backup at will. Exactly, this is quite good. So the whole thing about um, you know uh, running NAS because it generally would sit next to your router, uh, people will leave it 24 seven. And uh, I absolutely agree with you, it's just leave it there, it does its own thing. Even your computer switched off, as soon as you switch it on, it will do the backup. I have set up it uh, twice a week, um, you know, but everyone is different, so just whatever works for you. I think the, the, the more frequently you can do it, the better. So generally, I would switch on back up straight away. Let's say after the shoot, I definitely want to back it up. So, you know, um, I would run a manual one, not a schedule one. Um, Roy says, become, uh, backup is becoming problematic as cameras. You use more megabytes. Well, not really because uh, we, well, the hard drives become bigger and generally cheaper. So if you stick to old fashioned 3.5 inch hard drives, uh, you can, you generally, it's, it's not that expensive. Um, speaking of uh, types of uh, hard drives, so when you buy in the hard drives, you generally, the old fashioned hard drives, you have two sizes, 2.5 inches, they're smaller and 3.5 inches. So 3.5 inches, I generally go to proper personal computers, not the laptops. Laptops generally would have 2.5 inches or SSD drives nowadays. Uh, they also have different types. They have consumer type drives, um, which are generally cheaper. Uh, you also have enterprise type drives, which are more expensive, but they're definitely more robust and uh, they're designed to last longer. And you also have server type drives or NAS type drives as well. So generally they tend to uh, last longer as well. Again, look at your budgets more than anything else. So my setup is four 14 terabyte drives. That back in the day when I bought it would be 800 pounds. So it's 200 pounds each drive plus 500 pounds for the enclosure itself, Synology NAS. So it's quite an expensive setup. I did it over several months so I could kind of, you know, longer the pain but also ease it at the same time. Uh, but you can get like um, two base setup, which I personally don't recommend, but you know, you can get one for about 200 pounds, so this is quite useful. Or just no external hard drive, well, plus you will need drives, of course. Or just buy an external hard drive, because again, 
at least having one copy is already better than having um, like no copies at all. Because I don't know if uh, any of you were in that situation, but uh, I, about 15 years ago, I've lost all my scanned film photos. And luckily, because they were taken on film, I could rescan them again. But because I was silly and I just, you know, didn't pay attention to backup, my computer just broke, well, the hard drive failed, and uh, that was it. You can potentially send those uh, failed hard drives to the companies who can recover the data for you. It's very similar to recovering data on a broken memory card, let's say, you know, so like SanDisk SD card or something like this. But it's very expensive and you may not recover everything. So you definitely don't want to be in that position because yeah, the, the prices are, um, are ridiculous. Uh, yeah, here in Mexico, electrical power supply is nasty. I totally agree with that. I, even in UK sometimes, um, you know, it, it can happen, absolutely. Uh, da, da, da. <laughs> uh, yeah, files get more storage processor power you need. Again, yes, cameras become um, everything, you know, the whole technology, you know, big cameras start to shoot larger files. We have now 100 megapixel cameras. Yeah, that uh, gives you, what, 200 raw files, something like this. And if you convert to TIFF, that, that becomes big as well. Your Photoshop files, edits, uh, can become quite big as well. But as I say, the, the, generally the storage becomes cheaper and cheaper. That's the thing. So I think that's, that's the beauty of the things. But initial, um, initial investment, yes, can be quite, um, quite a big investment. But as I say, on a budget, get just one external hard drive, have a software, plug it to your computer, have a software, etc. Then eventually buy a second hard drive to make a copy of, of your first hard drive. As simple as that. That at least will get you going. Eventually, once, let's say, if you start to become professional or something like this, you may want to look at something like NAS backup, which is, yes, for a lot of people, it's a little bit an overkill, uh, but for professionals, it is a must, I think. Uh, it's not worth putting cheap uh, drives in a NAS. Um, I agree, but at the same time, if you have, a, let's say, something like RAID 5 setup um, where you can have two drives fail, it's a gamble. I wouldn't recommend that. And say anyone, if you ask professional, if you let's say, if you ask Richard Brown, he'll say, yeah, of course, if you want to spend on the hard drives, you know, do definitely buy proper NAS drives. I think uh, Western Digital have them red, if I'm not mistaken. So they, they would have red label on them. But again, you can get a gamble. I wouldn't recommend this. Yes, definitely do look at the, you know, at the proper hard drives, but at the same time, if you have your RAID and you want to get it cheaply done, you can go with it and eventually upgrade. Everyone is different, but look at your budgets more than anything else. Give us a like and a subscribe and say hi if you haven't already. Uh, how's it going, Ryan? I'm, I'm fine, yeah, I'm... Uh, I'm trying to entertain people for an hour. <laughs> uh, no, actually, I think it's you know it's it was a good. I think you know I when when we set it up, I, I thought it's a nice test just to see how it goes. You know, why not? Becky was doing it well. Becky can do it with her closed eyes, really. So you know, um, it's my first time. Okay, uh, nice thing about battery power backup is that at least your NAS go to safe shutdown before battery runs out. Battery then a full power shutdown. That's correct. That's that's absolutely. That's absolutely true. This is a useful feature. Let's see what I've missed. So just in case, if I, if I uh, miss something, uh, ta -ta -ta. I would say personally, if you find photography backup is a bit overly complicated, go talk to people who do this for a living. You know, yes, it may eventually cost you a little bit more, but once it's set up, you don't really need to come back to it. So, like my photography backup is set up, I don't really look into it anymore. It just does it automatically. That's all it is. All I do is just once every month or so, I just connect the drive to the NAS and just copy that. That's all it is. It runs in the background. There's nothing to worry about. But if you do find it overly complicated, do speak to people. Again, Richard Brown, did we put his uh, details? Um, I'm going to share email address. So if you, if you ever need to get in touch with Richard, do, um, do email him. Uh, let me just see. Oh, yeah. Could you share this um, email, por favor? Yeah. Yeah, Roy says no one appreciates backup until they lose everything. And that's why it is a boring conversation to have, but unfortunately it's the one that we need to effectively because without proper backup, you may find yourself in a situation where you've lost all your photographs. 
<laughs> Ryan says, you are, um, you are doing good at entertaining. We are all here for your dedicated Nikon content. We always be entertained. Thank you very much. Uh, speaking of Nikon content, as I say, have you seen the, those Z9 photographs, the back of Z9 at the Olympics? Tell me what you think. Um, Samantha says, I start and work from one external drive, make a second copy as a backup until the third copy of site. Exactly. This is a very simple and cost-effective solution to start with. You know, if you don't want to feed it with all this NAS setup, you can do that. I would still recommend cloud backup. Actually, one thing I forgot to mention about cloud backup, a lot of people talk about privacy and they say where the servers are because a lot of people getting concerned, let's say, if, you, uh, if your servers are in China um, and sharing your information, let's say, you know, with China or something like this. I, I know that BlackBase, um, BlackBase, BlackBase, um, they have their service in the United States. So um, that's quite good. Again, a lot of those questions come up when you're looking at VPN server as well. So some people don't want to have their VPNs located in China, you know, so for all sorts of reasons. But yeah, when you choose your cloud solution, do check where they have their service. Z9 looks good. Yeah, I agree with that. I, it's, it was interesting in terms of button layout on the Z9 because you know where you got the playback button and the delete button? The, instead of playback button, it says function four. I found it very interesting. And then obviously we don't have that little screen on the back of Z9 as well like you normally would have on T6. So that was interesting as well. I don't know how, how, you know, how true those images are. It could be Joe, Joe McNally holding it. You never know. Uh, but it is an interesting setup how they found, you know, obviously it's a different button layout from D6, but it's interesting how they designed the camera to obviously fit professional needs. Okay, uh, I made a video on Z9 photos already. Thank you, Ryan. We're going to check it out. Uh, David Lewis says, for pro photos, um, buy business interruption insurance that covers drive failure. That's a, that's a brilliant idea. So um, I don't know what the costs are, but uh, that's a that's a potential um, way of doing it. Um, Michael Reed says, once uh, one of my hard drives gets old, I purchase a replacement and do another backup. Exactly this. You can now run tests on your uh, hard drives as well. So you see if you've got any, um, let's say, um, failure points or something like this. So if you've got bad blocks, uh, it's, uh, it's a kind of a good indication that this hard drive is about to give up. So definitely do run those tests every now and then. Synology has their own tests built in in their own OS, uh, but also Windows and Mac have those tests as well. So if you do connect just external hard drive to your computer, you can run those every now and then. Uh, thank you, Randall. Appreciate it. Uh, ta -ta -ta, well, I have to up my game on storage. This seems easier than going disk spanning on floppy disks. How many floppy disks do you need to um, back up one terabyte? That's a good question. I think one floppy disk is what, 1.4 megabyte? Futini, Futini looks, she doesn't even look at me, she just looks through me. <laughs> she's just, she's like, it's like, I don't speak this language. I you speak. A word just having this live <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember that Doom uh, on PC would take, I think, three or four floppy disks to be installed on a computer. Or we could use tapes as well. Thank you, Ryan, as well, for your donation. Uh, t -t -t some Samsung Magician will test your drive. Yes, yeah, Samsung Magician comes with uh, Samsung drives generally um, on a computer, so that's quite useful as well. Uh, t -t 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 you can have your data encrypted in Backblaze, so it's not accessible on their service. Um, that's, oh, hi, Ronnie. Thanks for that. Appreciate it. Ronnie's in the chat. By the way, have you noticed, Ronnie? Our connection is fabulous today because we are finally fully wired. Thanks for that, by the way. Okay, who else is there? Okay, let's see. EMC now Dell claimed that they were never responsible for loss of data. They claim was is valid. However, only large enterprise can afford it. Okay, yeah, that's that's the thing. But as I say, you won't have as many copies as you want. Yes, you can have them. You know, if you if you have just online backup, if something happens to Backblaze, you know, if they get hacked, you you know, encryption, you're not going to lose your data or something like this. You know, they're not going to access it, but you may lose the data. You won't be able to download it. So that's why you want to have your physical copy somewhere. So all sorts of things you need to be prepared for. But again, obviously, we all can be OCD to a certain level. That's the thing. So I started with, yeah, just one copy is enough. And then eventually I scaled up. 
So everyone is different. And as I say, you can keep it as simple as you want. You can overcomplicate as you want as well. Uh, t -t -t DVDs, exactly. So um, Jeremy says, I use DVDs as well as hard drives, but after one of my older one failed, don't reply on it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so DVDs are 4.4 gigabyte. So what's 4.4 gigabytes? Our memory cards nowadays are what? You can get 64 gig card. So again, that effectively now, the version of uh, DVDs is Blu-ray, they're what, 50 ter um, is it 50 terabytes? No, 50 gigabytes. Um, so you can back up on Blu-rays as well, but again, hard drives, you can buy a 10 terabyte hard drive, it's much bigger. So in terms of this, and you keep, can keep it in one place. Da, 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 da. Let's see, I have a local ra RAID and a NAS, so I have a local copy, then backed up to RAID via SumSync software and also to NAS, at least three copies of all my images. Perfect, Mark, thanks for that. That's, that's really good setup. Again, um, if you're not sure what RAID is and how to set it up when you buy NAS equipment, uh, you can go to Synology RAID calculator where effectively what you can do, let me just see if I can share that. You can effectively say what NAS are you using, how many bays you will have. You can add the capacity of your drives and then choose the RAID type. So let's say if I have four eight terabyte drives, which technically should give me what, four times eight is 32. If, if I use RAID 1, I only can have eight terabytes of photos on it. The, the rest of 24 terabytes will be reserved for effectively a failure. So if uh, one of those hard drives fail, then you will be able to replace that hard drive and the system will rebuild all the information on it so without losing any data. So all your photographs will be safe. Now, if you go to RAID 5, we've got 24 terabytes of space available and then eight terabytes um, are gonna be saved for uh, protection effectively. So if you're gonna look at the RAID types in here, they have a good explanation of what each RAID type does. My only consideration is if you do use RAID, don't use, um, let's say, a company appropriate RAID type. So let's say Synology has its own RAID the problem with that setup, if you use Synology RAID, you basically are limited to their equipment. So if you one day you decide to switch to another brand, you won't be able to move your hard drives there. So effectively, what you want to do is, uh, you know, you want to use just a standardized RAID. So that way, if you switch to another braid, uh, another brand, then you can carry all over your hard drives. <laughs> Is that the time? Yeah. Oh dear, okay. Well, I think it was, I think that was good. I think we covered everything. Um, how was it guys? Well, did you understand what I said? Too complicated? Shall we never do those things again? Please? <laughs> um, but as I say, get external hard drive. Start with this. Get another hard drive to back up that external hard drive. Look at the online options. That's already diversifies you. Eventually, if you feel adventurous, get a NAS solution and do that. Or if you want someone to take care of, you, of it, speak to the right person and they can set it up for you for a fee. All right, shall we do a give giveaway? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to the, I have two giveaways right today. Yes, that's right. So let's do the, uh, the giveaway for the live audience, right? So we're gonna open that. That's live, okay. And then I'm gonna switch to that. Okay, well, click to spin. So let's just do that. Can I have the hat? All right, so you got Brian Shaw. Congratulations. You got this really, really nice cap. A Nikon cap. It's like a very nice black on black Nikon cap. So that's really nice. Okay, so that's number one. Then let's do the people who commented on our previous live stream, not live after it was aired. So we're just gonna open that. So we got, oh, <laughs> it's not bad, it's only seven people. Okay, let's do that. Peter, no, Joseph. Joseph won, congratulations, Joseph. Uh, you've got the cap, so hopefully you will see that. And um, yeah, please win us, email us and uh, at media at graceovermeans.co.uk with your address details and we will try to ship it to you 
as soon as possible. Can I put this one on? Yes, sir. Okay. This is mine. I'm not going to send it. <laughs> Beautiful. It's a little bit oversized. I look like a, some sort of, I look like a Peaky Blinder, so you know. No, I like it like this. It's, oh, it's much. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so what do we have? Uh, let's see. Let's see the comments. Choo, 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 choo. Basic backup would be two remote drives. Many things. Thank you very much for uh, bearing with us. Um, hopefully, I'll do better next time. But uh, next week, we'll be with for, for Tini and Becky. And I'm not sure what we're going to talk about. What are we going to talk about? Do you know? No idea. All right. It's going to be a <laughs> secret. Exactly. That's how we keep it fresh. But we will see you with Becky on Wednesday for the podcast. We will also publish extended interview with Michael Alephriadis. That's a um, kind of short version of it aired on our podcast. But because it was so much and we tried to keep the podcast fairly short, um, as short as possible. There's going to be one hour interview with Mike on Monday, podcast on Wednesday, and then back to the live stream on Friday again. Thank you very much, uh, very much for watching us, and we will see you next week. Bye. Am I doing it right? Yes. Do I click hand? Yes, please. It's not a disaster, no? Is it? Yeah. Is it? No? No? We're there?